amniotic sac surrounding the unborn child is like the one which was our home for the first nine months of life. Does being fully human depend on where we live? It did a few decades ago, if you were a Jew living in Germany. It did a few centuries ago, if you were a black person living in a slave state. And yes, again in this country, being perceived as fully human does depend on where you live. If where you live happens to be a womb. Because in 1973, the Supreme Court removed all legal protection from unborn children and allowed for their destruction by abortion, not just for the first three months, or even the first six months, but up until the moment of birth. The right to choose sounds so American and so democratic, but it is neither when the right to choose becomes more important than the choice involved. In a baseball game, the pitcher has the right to throw a variety of pitches toward the plate. But if he chooses, for example, to throw the ball directly at the batter, the penalties that follow would remind him that the right to choose has limitations. How many times have we heard, I wouldn't have an abortion myself, but I support the right of others to choose? That sounds so tolerant, so broad-minded, but is it? Let's apply that same thinking to other areas of human rights, and our defects become immediately obvious. I personally would not enslave a black person, but I do support the right of others to choose. There were many Americans who defended slavery with that very argument. I would not exterminate the Jews myself, but I support the right of others to choose. There were many in Nazi Germany who tolerated that. And how many would vote for a political candidate who said, I am personally opposed to raping a woman, but I support the right of others to choose. Those who say, I wouldn't have an abortion myself, but I support the rights of others to choose. End the sentence without completing the thought. To choose what? We need to understand what is involved in the abortion procedure. This is an unborn in the early weeks of development. In these early months of pregnancy, the most common method of abortion is the suction abortion, in which a tube is inserted in the uterus and a strong vacuum is applied to the body of the child. It tears the body, breaking it into pieces small enough to be sucked up through a tube to be collected in a jar and flushed away. This is a child in the later weeks of development. At this stage of pregnancy, the most commonly used method of abortion is the saline method, which causes the child to die through acute salt poisoning. The strong caustic solution is injected into the sac so that the child inhales and swallows the poison while it burns off the outer layer of skin. I wouldn't have an abortion myself, but I support the right of others to choose. We must come to see that we are responsible not only for what we ourselves do, but also for what we allow to be done to others. Still, some would argue that since women have always sought abortions, despite laws against them, the only way to eliminate back alley abortions is to legalize them. In this country, a vehicle is stolen every 32 seconds. Should we legalize car theft since over one million cars are stolen each year despite laws against it? Shoplifting costs U.S. business $20 million annually. Should we legalize shoplifting since so many people see nothing wrong with it? Does legalizing abortion actually do any good towards eliminating back alley abortions? The reality is that some clinics are publicly operating without any license or health department supervision. Even in clinics that are licensed, it is not uncommon for abortions to be performed by unqualified people in unsanitary conditions using high pressure tactics and false information. I had an abortion. 
Now, I'd worked for a surgeon and was surprised to find that the abortion facility didn't adhere to the standard procedures for maintaining a sterile environment. But in the past three years, I've counseled with hundreds of women from all over the country who've been surgically mutilated as a result of abortion. And I've come to know that the failure to maintain sterile instruments and conditions is only one of the many dangers associated with the so-called safe legal abortion. We are surely naive to believe that those who risked fines, jail, and social disgrace to perform abortions when they were illegal would voluntarily abandon their lucrative practice now that abortions are acceptable, legal, and promoted as a social good. Certainly a legal abortion is no safer for an unborn child than a back alley abortion. Perhaps it is safe only for the back alley abortionist because he no longer fears prosecution. According to science, a fetus is a living human being, but is a fetus a person? What is a person? Person is a legal term, not a scientific one. Legal personhood is accorded corporations, trade unions, ships. Only those who are legal persons are granted protection under our Constitution. So personhood means value. At one time in American history, Indians were not legal persons they were not granted protection under our laws. When we wanted something that belonged to the Indians, we simply took it by force. Usually what we wanted was their land, so we denied them their property. In 1857, the Supreme Court ruled in the Dred Scott decision that the Negro slave was not a person, but rather chattel, property of his master. What we wanted from the slave was his labor, so we denied him his liberty. We rightly view this period of our history with shame, but we must remember that slavery then, as abortion now, was a very profitable practice, widely accepted socially, condoned by many churches of the day, and upheld by the Supreme Court. In 1973, the Supreme Court ruled that another group of human beings, this time unborn children, are not legal persons. And if we do not want them for any reason, we can deny them their life. So while we have a constitution which declares that no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, we have, in fact, denied all three, life, liberty, and property, for the sake of convenience, expediency, and economics. It's no big secret that many people our age are sexually active, and some girls are getting pregnant. When a girl finds out she's pregnant, she is afraid, embarrassed, and she might even believe that her life is ruined. You might be the one person who will stick with her and help her to understand that sacrificing her baby's life is not the best or only possible solution. You might be the only one who will help her to want her baby to live. Then you'll be able to say that you helped a mother give life a chance. Think about it. What would your response be if someone asked you, who broke the baby?
How did you first get involved in this movement? Oh, that's a good question with a long answer because it began 16 years ago. I was an abortion activist. Seeking that's me, Jean Garten, speaking to one of the many hundreds of teenage and college students during the past 16 years.